This is Prelinger Archives. You've never seen most of the films in this room. These are movies made by corporations, educators, advertisers, organizations, and ordinary people. These aren't Hollywood movies, although some of them were made in Hollywood. I wish my living room were all redone. New drapes, new rugs, all oh, this is fun. It's nice to have a telephone to blend with my new drapes and rugs. A living room that's all. They made films to instruct, to sell, to convince, to brag, and sometimes simply to record fleeting sights and sounds. These are ephemeral films, films made not for the ages, but for specific purposes at specific times. I've got to have a home. Hundreds of thousands were produced in the 20th century. You're about to enter a beautiful, exciting, wonderful new world. The world of 1960. For the first time in history, you'll see... Not one. Not two. But three completely new kinds of Ford cars for 1960. They tell us more about ourselves and our histories than most feature films or TV programs ever could. Me next. To bring us still closer together, there was the tattoo of the saber-toothed tiger. It made us blood brothers, gave us a name. The angry world made us special in one way, our tattoo made us special in another. Gave us a new identity. A feeling of belonging somewhere. So down they come. Some of the world's oldest, biggest, and tallest trees. Quite often they've survived only by lucky accident. Most of their producers went out of business. Schools switched from film to videotape. and almost nobody saved the films, perhaps half survived. Prelinger Archive started collecting industrial and educational films back in 1982. In those days, very few people took the film seriously. They seemed to be victims of their own hokiness. Hello, Wally, come on in. Hello yourself. Gee, look at you all. Already and right on time, too. That's a good deal. Thanks. Mother, are you busy? I'd like you to meet my father. Dad, this is Wally Johnson. Well, hello, Wally. How do you do, Mr. Ames? Here I am, darling. And I suppose this is Wally. That's right, Mrs. Ames. How do you do? Well, it's nice meeting you. But slowly, attitudes began to change. People started to realize ephemeral films were some of the most vivid historical and cultural documents around. Now they come to Prelinger Archives to look, to learn, and to license material for new projects. Since we started, we've collected over 48,000 films. In many cases, we hold the original negatives or master materials. Many thousands of our films don't exist anywhere else. The archives covers most of the 20th century.
Educational films focus on almost every aspect of life, science, culture, and the arts. Well, I think that love, a, a real mature love, is more than I'd imagine. I guess so. On Bob and Jean, it looks all right, but... We're not ready for that kind of attachment, are we? But we can still have a lot of fun, can't we? Sure we can. Would you like... How about going roller skating next Friday night? Industrial and advertising films show people making things, selling them, and using them. America! Industrial miracle of the century. From all the states flow bounteously the products of forest, mine, and field. From her workshops pour all the needs of modern living. By air, land, and water, these treasures of enterprise are sent out to every point of the compass. No job is too big for American industry. Amateur films, or home movies, show people living and working together and also the look of the land in times past. But this collection is more than just a library of images showing the way we were. More eloquently than almost any other evidence, these films show how we were supposed to be. They show us the role models of the past, here are studious school children. My, you certainly know all about dishwashers. Oh, not all. But to tell the truth, Mrs. Adams, anything of a mechanical or electrical nature interests me. Fits in with a hobby of mine. Dishwashers? Not exactly. Time study. Productive workers. Oh, yes, Mr. Borden. I'm sure that Mr. Thompson will be glad to see you. Free spending consumers. It's a happy-go-spending world, reflected in the windows of the suburban shopping centers where they go to buy. Well-behaved teenagers. These boys greet their dad as though they are genuinely glad to see him, as though they had really missed being away from him during the day and are anxious to talk to him. And smiling housewives. There is something else we want, too. An opportunity to choose the attraction that serves the purpose for which we want it. Our wants and tastes differ. We are not all alike in what we like. Some of us have one like. These films are key to understanding a century in which media and persuasion are deeply intertwined. It is also possible for newspapers and other forms of communication to be controlled by private interests. I thought I told you to kill that story. It'll cost us a lot of advertising. If that story goes out, I quit. All right. It's been said that preservation without access is pointless. We believe in access, whether it's commercial or non-commercial. Tens of thousands of people have used our collection for teaching and learning, for productions, and even as evidence. The ballot is right at the voter's eye level, easily read. And all officers and all candidates are at the same eye level. No candidate suffers by being placed in an unfavorable position. Access helps to support us, too. Commercial license fees support our collecting, cataloging, and copying. But scholars, artists, students, and unfunded independents get in free. Recently, in association with the Internet Archive, we put 1,001 titles online. Anyone can download these high-quality digital video files without paying. Thousands already have. We think this is one way to make key films available to the greatest possible number of people. Two, three, six, eight. Are you sure it isn't too early out there? 
Oh, no, it's, it's 11 o'clock here. That means it's 8 o'clock out there. Hello? Sally? Sally, this is Mother. Simple, wasn't it? She just picked up her telephone and dialed her daughter in San Francisco, California. We plan to continue collecting films and making them available to anyone who needs to see and use them. We believe that knowing where we've been is essential if we're to understand where we're heading.